I see them on the sidewalk, at the bus stop, and in the supermarket. Their accents, their clothes, and their demeanor intrigue me. As a teacher of English as a second language, I've had the distinct privilege of seeing them change from two-dimensional curiosities into three-dimensional people with incredible life experiences. I could tell you about Emma from China, who wasn't supposed to be born, but was, and how she came to be a successful entrepreneur by the age of 22. Or I could tell you about Amani from Saudi Arabia, mother of four who studies English during the day, then goes home to cook dinner and help the children with their homework before starting her own, and finally falls into bed to get four precious hours of sleep, night after night. There's Mario from Italy, who started his journey toward the priesthood at the tender age of nine by begging to attend a theological boarding school. He described in an essay how every Sunday his mother would tuck a clean white handkerchief into his pocket and give him the too tight hug of a parent who will not see her son again until the weekend. I want to tell them all, but for now, I'll limit myself to one. He's from Libya. It was his cap that first caught my attention. After that, it was his infectious smile. When he introduced himself in my ESL class, I was delighted to learn that he'd studied veterinary medicine because I also like animals. Between classes to help him develop fluency, I shared stories with him about our Labrador retriever, and he shared his professional perspective with me. When the dog ate a steel wool scouring pad, he gently suggested, maybe something's missing in his diet. I wasn't sure he would be willing to talk about his personal life, but when I asked if I could interview him for this project, he was eager to tell me his story. I really thought I knew him before, but as he spoke, he began to transform into a person with far more depth than I had ever imagined. Within three days of our interview, he had forwarded me almost a hundred photos of his life. Abdul was born into Gaddafi's Libya in 1984, third in a family of six children, son of an oil engineer father, and a mother whose education had ended with elementary school at her father's command. He had been interested in animals from an early age. As a teenager, he had stayed up all night to care for a sick lamb that was to be sacrificed the next day in a traditional Muslim ceremony. Winning honors in high school and university, he was one of only three students in Tripoli University to be offered a scholarship to study abroad. His father, whose own dreams of foreign study had been squelched by Gaddafi's limitations on foreign travel, encouraged Abdul to pursue the opportunity. Then came the siege of Tripoli, when average citizens could not go in or out of the city for 18 months. When the revolution was over, the doors opened. Studying in the U.S. had been a lifelong dream, but the decision to leave Libya was a difficult one. Abdul had wanted to be there to help his father transition from work to retirement, and his longing to help protect his two teenage sisters is almost palpable. A few months ago, families in his Tripoli neighborhood awakened to find leaflets from Al-Qaeda on their doorsteps announcing, any woman seen driving a car will be shot on sight. Now, instead of helping to escort his sisters back home in Libya, Abdul sits in English classes at Ohio State four hours each day. He takes a bus back to his apartment for lunch and a nap before returning to campus where he studies on his own for seven or eight more hours. On a typical Friday night in Libya, he would gather with friends at a favorite cafe. While my 20-something son and his friends talk endlessly about sports, cars, and movies, Abdul and his friends take on different matters. The state of Libya, the possibility of a partitioned country, the rise of Al-Qaeda, 
gangs, lawlessness, and selective unemployment based on pre-revolution loyalties. Abdul's goal is to get a PhD in veterinary medicine, open his own clinic in Libya, and teach what he has learned to others, even though the majority of vet school graduates in his country cannot find jobs in their field and end up changing careers. He is only one of a score of young Libyans I have met, bright, eager students whose dreams have been put on hold while a new Libya struggles to be born. Just one story is all I have time for now, but there are so many more to tell. Teaching English to international students has given me a unique opportunity to hear stories from around the world, but they are available to all of us if we just take the time to listen.